watching NBC Bay Area News at 7. Plus, millions of Americans are making tough decisions about how to care for their aging parents. An expert joins us with how you can prepare. The weak economy is taking a toll on people's retirement funds, and for the elderly, it can mean a lot of pressure on their children in terms of caring for them. Here with more insight on how to handle this transition with ease is aging expert Carolyn Brent. She's author of, also the author of this book. We're going to talk about more. So tell us, how do we know when our parents need more care, more assisted living? That's actually a great question. Your parents will need more care. Let's say that you're going to visit your parents and they live across country, and you notice all of a sudden your parents' behavior has changed. Their house is a mess, their, their basement is flooded, they're not taking their medication, or they could be eating, eating rotten food in their refrigerator or disoriented. That's telling you there is a telltale sign that something's wrong, or perhaps they haven't taken their medication in five weeks. Okay. So that's very, very key. So we actually have a graphic, um, severe behavioral changes, yes. forgetfulness, you say, is Abs one of them. Absolutely. And then living space is in disarray. So these Ab are the key points to look out for. Absolutely. So once you say, okay, it looks like they need some help, what are the options out there? Well, you could, first of all, Take them to the doctor, let the doctor do a formal diagnosis on your parent, and then the doctor is going to ask you, do you want your parents to move into your home? If you're able to let your parents move into your home and you could take care of them, you could do that. Or you could provide assistant living, which starts at at least $32,000 a year for private assistant living. And the sicker the parent becomes or the more disabled the parent becomes, that price goes up, up, and up to the sum of a long-term care $79,000 a year. Okay, is there also like a, where like a nurse comes and like checks and spends the day with the parents too? Is that an option? That is an option provided that your parents are cashed out and they do not have any assets whatsoever. And that is not like on a daily basis, that could be on a weekly basis, which really puts a strain on the primary caregiver. Right, okay. Before we talk about the primary caregiver, because I, I know that's very, emo it's an emotional and physical toll, let's talk about assisted living. Uh, what, what should you ask before like putting your parents in this home? First of all, have your parents to go with you to see if they're comfortable with the, the people in the environment. And then what you want to do, you want to ask, you know, how much is this going to cost? Is it really just $2,000 a month or, it, or is the medication included with the cost? And the reason why I say that, I had my dad in private assistant living and it was $2,000 a month. And then they wanted to charge me $100 per pill that I was bringing there. I mean, the pills were paid for, but they wanted to charge an additional uh, $100 per and pill. that adds up. What about the turnover rate of the facility? Is that something we that, should look at? That's very important because you, your parent, you want them to get accustomed to being where they are. And if there's a different uh, employee there every single day, as far as turn, turning over, it's gonna keep them, them confused. You want your parents to feel comfortable and really get into a routine. So that's really, really key. Now, is this a conversation you should have with all the siblings and the parents? You know, ask the parents if they want assisted care to go to a home or live with you, you know, live with their children or have somebody come, come to the home every day. Is that a discussion? Uh, Even know, though they're, you know, if they're yeah. reaching a little bit of dementia, yeah. is that a decision they can make? Well, this is the key. Typically, when your parents have to go into an assistant living environment, in most cases, you may have to make that decision for them because they don't, they're going to constantly say, there's nothing wrong with me. I feel great. You're the one that's crazy. That's what they're going to think. But it should be a family affair. The family should get together, if possible, make the decision together. If the family cannot get together, that's when a sibling rivalry attorney should be involved or a, uh, a mediator to help bring the family together to make these decisions. Very important decisions. Let's say you decide to be the primary caregiver. That is a huge strain, as you mentioned. What kind of support would you need? Very great question. The primary caregiver, they need love from their siblings, first of all. They need for the siblings to get involved with that parent and go visit the parent. If not, they need uh, to have Skype. That's a free option. Call up the, if they live like in New York or overseas, have, make Skype calls. Send the caregiver money. Buy a day spa treatment for the caregiver. But most importantly, give that caregiver, uh, caregiver a break. 
they need a break. I know they know people don't realize that because it's uh, very what uh, it's an emotional toll. Absolutely. To be constantly caring for somebody. Absolutely. Okay, and you've actually had first ex firsthand experience yes, with do. your father. Yes, I do. Is that what inspired you to write the book? What inspired me to write the book was not only did I care for my father, but towards the end of what my siblings thought was my father's life, I found myself in probate court, and I thought this is ridiculous. Why are we in probate court when number one there's not any money, and I was the the only one out of eight children for 12 years caring for our dad. So because I saw the disparity with, you know, families and the sibling rivalry, I started doing research and I found that there wasn't any books to really help families know that one person can't do it all. The family need to pull together as a team and let that parent die with respect and dignity of their entire family around. A lot of important information. It's all in the book, Why Wait? The Baby Boomer's Guide to Preparing Emotionally, Financially, and Legally for a Parent's Death. Carolyn yeah. Brent, thank you so much for coming thank in. Thank you so much. Nice to meet thank you. you. Thanks for your time. Nice meeting you. Okay, we're going to get a check of our yeah. forecast now with Jeff Ranieri.